What's up, everyone? Today, we are going to be going over everything we know about the character Catnap from Poppy Playtime Chapter 3. In the video, we will be going over his looks, his actions, his motives, and his fate. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get started. We first see Catnap right when the game starts as he drops us into a slide. We don't see Catnap for a while after that, but we could get a small glimpse of him when he dropped us. As we can see here, Catnap is terrifying with a large gaping mouth, tiny white dotted eyes, as well as him being quite giant for a cat. We can't see Catnap for a while after this, but we do see very subtle events starring Catnap, such as when he climbed up into the vent, we can see his long tail. This is the second point of the game where we can see Catnap. We now know that Catnap is a very large creature in the factory. According to the fan community, Catnap is around 10 feet, four inches tall in his normal form and around 13 feet, eight inches tall in his nightmare form. Catnap is a very hostile creature. We know this because he actively hunts us throughout the game trying to kill us. Now we have talked about Catnap's monster form and his nightmare form, but let's talk about his form that her was manufactured in. This is his toy form. We see Catnap is a purple cat with a moon pendant around his neck. We can read in his description that he is in charge of making sure his friends get a good night's rest and something very creepy about his description is that it says there's nothing Catnap loves more than to watch his friends sleep soundly. Now this could just be me, but when Ollie was talking about Catnap, he mentioned how he will stalk you until you're most vulnerable. Maybe him watching people sleep is where he developed this technique. I'm not really sure, let me know down in the comments your thoughts. Catnap in the Smiling Critters TV show was advertised to the public. However, not much time has passed until staff at Playtime's Hio has gotten calls about their children having violent nightmares and sitting next to them was their catnap doll. Apparently when the kids were asleep, the catnap doll would emit red smoke into the room causing the kids to fall asleep. But at the price of them having horrific nightmares and waking up not being the same person they were before. This is catnap's main power. As we know, he uses this all the time in the game so he can get an upper hand against us. This is what causes the player to need a gas mask. Catnap's origin started off in an old cartoon named The Smiling Critters. Catnap was one of eight members including Bubba Bubba Fant, Kickin' Chicken, Bobby Bear Hug, Hoppy Hopscotch, Picky Piggy, Crafty Corn Dog Day, and yours truly, Catnap. Catnap is described in the official description. Catnap is a calming presence for the critters and ensures he and his friends always have the right amount of sleep to jumpstart the morning play. End of the day. There's nothing Catnap enjoys more than watching his friends sleep soundly. We also see that catnap scent is lavender. If we look up what the smell of lavender does to the human brain, we can find out that lavender makes your brain relax and make everything become calm, which is funny enough catnap's entire theme in the game. Now, I'm not sure if the developers did that on purpose or if they did that on accident and got really lucky with the scent. Little did they know little deep divers like myself would find this out. In one of the Smiling Critters commercials, we can see this. Let's check it out. We can see that the critters were so happy to see Catnap, they begged him to help them to sleep, so he let out his red smoke, making them sleep. This most likely shows that Catnap was crazy from the very beginning, since the cartoon was seen as rather disturbing in a way, since it almost looked as if all of the smiling critters were dead. I mean, if I were a kid at home and saw that, I wouldn't be able to sleep for a few nights. Scared that Catnap was just beyond the corner of my room that I couldn't see since we didn't really get much information on Catnap's origins other than the description given by the wiki and the little cartoon mob entertainment tease before the game was released. That's about all we can cover for the origins of our purple friend. 
so let's move on the next category. Okay, so this section of the video is going to be rather small, but it's still important enough to add into the video. Somewhere in the game, I forgot where. We can find a VHS tape if we listen to it. We can hear a staff member talking to Catnap about his usefulness to the children. Let's hear that now. Okay, this is Catnap. Uh, experiment number 1188. What's his real name again? Ah, okay. <clears throat> hey, uh, Theo. How you doing, bud? Normally I'd have Dr. Sawyer do this, but he's, uh, out, let's say. So you got me until they find his replacement. First off, congrats. This is officially your fourth year in your new body, and you've made some real progress, pal. I was told that when you and the other smiling critters, you know, dog day, picky piggy, yada yada yada, were added into play care, that you weren't really getting along too well with the kids like everybody else was. But look at you now. The kids love you. And that red smoke, I mean, that's fantastic, isn't it? Is his, uh, voice thingy still broken? Theo, nobody's gonna save you. This prison is where you belong. We'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care, but your home is here. And as for the prototype, his home is in the labs. This is your life now. Get used to it. Catnap is obviously very annoyed with the staff member and reminds him that the prototype will set them free. They get scared and leave the room. Yes, I told you this section is super small, but it is a huge part of his story. Catnap's background is actually quite interesting. According to the wiki, Catnap was made by Playtime Corporation in 1990. He was made by the staff as a side character of the Smiling Critters Gang. Catnap was one of eight different critters. Catnap was the one who stood out above the rest though. This being because in the cartoon that we have watched, we can see Catnap has a special power nobody else has. Yes, as we have already went over the red smoke, this made the children who purchased the Catnap doll have violent nightmares. So Playtime Corporation decided it would be best if they removed Catnap from the line of critters for good, making sure the company's name wasn't ruined. Around this time is when the staff at Playtime Corporations was testing children and putting them into toys. Since Catnap was off of the market, they decided they would use him at the factory in order to keep the children asleep to make it easier for them to be tested on. So an unlucky young boy named Theodore Graham Bell was chosen for the spot of Catnap. The staff killed him and then pouted his soul into the cat. Catnap was then given orders to patrol play care and make sure the children were asleep when they needed to be. At first, Catnap tried to get the kids to go to bed on their own without using his gas, since he knew it was harmful to them. But the kids were terrified of Catnap so it forced Catnap against his better judgment to use the red smoke. Soon after these events took place is when Catnap finally met the prototype. Now we know from Ollie that something tragic happened to Catnap, which is why he started to worship the prototype since it saved him from being killed. But we can guess it was life or death between it, so Catnap swore allegiance to the prototype after that, following its every command. Soon after this, we all know about the Hour of Joy, since it was all the prototype's influence, and Catnap was a sworn follower of the prototype, you can guess what happened next. Catnap killed everyone in play care during the Hour of Joy, leaving nobody alive in the process. After the Hour of Joy, Catnap was most likely tasked to patrol the play care, making sure there were no survivors, and if they were. The prototype ordered Catnap to dispose of them. Even though Catnap is so strong, the prototype still had control over him. That goes to show the crazy influence the prototype has over most of the toys in the factory. Let's move on to his actions. Since we didn't see much of Catnap throughout the chapter, we can't really so much about his actions. All we know is that he lives for the hunt, according to Ollie. He loves to stalk his prey before attacking. This can be seen all throughout the game because we can see Catnap in areas where he's trying to be stealthy and watch us. Such as when he was stalking us in Home Sweet Home after we entered the Room of Gas. Catnap also seemed to not want to hurt us through the chapter. In the counselor's office, he even gave us the chance to leave when he said this. Now I'm guessing Catnap didn't really want to hurt us up until we started making too many problems for the prototype, which most likely led the prototype to order Catnap to attack the player. 
which he did once we entered an office and tried to leave with a battery, resulting in him attacking us and breaking our gas mask. Catnap is more of a mental antagonist, since he uses his gas in order to make the player become defenseless and paranoid. He used our trauma against us. We see this when he used the gas and made a nightmare version of Huggy Wuggy chase us down a corridor. Another time being when he used the gas to make himself look terrifying, transforming into the form we all know as Nightmare Catnap. Since we already know that Catnap worships the prototype like a god, we saw in the giant cave area of the game that Catnap built a shrine for the prototype. Now I'm not sure if this is true, but Catnap may have killed a huge number of characters for this, since we can see PJ Pugger Pillar resembling a head at the top, as well as remnants of Mommy Longlegs and some of the smiling critters. Catnap is obviously a devoted servant to the prototype and has done unspeakable things in order to please him, but something unexpected happened at the end of the chapter. Let's get right into Catnap's fate. After we plug in the last battery to the wall, Catnap comes out of the ceiling, but little does he know we have a supercharged hand. We shoot the hand at him. He stumbles away, being electrocuted and being set on fire. He rolls around and manages to get the fire and electricity off of him. Then we see the prototype reach its hand out from the ceiling, seemingly offering Catnap a helping hand. Catnap then gets up and rests on his knees in an almost praying body motion. Then we can see the prototype stab his hands into Catnap's mouth, killing him and dragging his body away. Now I have no idea as to why the prototype did this. Catnap obviously had the strength to move around, so he wasn't close to being dead. Another thing I'm confused about was whether Catnap allowed the prototype to kill him, or if the prototype betrayed Catnap and killed him anyways. There isn't much we can say or go off of since this was at the end of the chapter. So if we are going to want an explanation for this, sadly we are going to have to wait until chapter 4 releases. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to join my Discord links in the description. Also, I am open to collaborations with other YouTubers who like to make the same content that I do. My business email is in the profile. Shoot me an email if you'd like to do that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching if you liked it. Remember to like, subscribe, comment down below, share with your friends, and turn on notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Everyone have an amazing day.